Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Danielle Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of the Brand Theory Podcast, where we bring you conversations of inspiration and value to help you stay on brand, stay true to yourself and your goals for yourself, your business, so you can get there sooner rather than later. Today, we're going to jump right into the episode because it is filled with awesome tips and tricks for you. We are talking to Claire Gallagher, a designer and digital strategist who focuses on helping solo service-based businesses like coaches and creatives to show up online and scale up their business. Showing up online is a great way to get clients, but actually doing it is easier said than done. I know that. There's so much that can get in our way, so much conflicting advice online, and only so many hours in the day. As business owners, Claire recognizes we have problem-solving creative brains. When we step into the noisy online world with all of its potential, its advice, and ideas, we get pulled in 25 different directions at a time. Amen to that. And often we get pulled away from the work we set out to do in the first place. Claire approaches Claire's approach to website and digital marketing is to do less better. The key is to focus on connecting with people who need your services and make them think this is exactly what I've been looking for. I don't think there needs to be much more introduction than that, but let's get started. Welcome to the show, Claire. Hi, Danielle. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to chat with you today after stalking you for a little bit. I'm excited to dive into this comp though. (laughs) I might have stalked you a little bit also. There's some very fun videos of your mother there. I love (laughs) that, yeah. (laughs) She likes to play real coy that she is always embarrassed or, you know, that she doesn't actually like it, but (laughs) she likes it. It's usually take two that I get her because she likes to fix her hair. Oh, nice one. So I know we heard a little bit about you in your intro, but I always like to ask kind of in your own words, tell us a little bit more about you, your journey so far, and how you got to where you are. Well, geographically, how I got (laughs) to where I am, the accent, as you might guess, is Irish, but I live in France. I met a very attractive Frenchman many years ago, (laughs) and he, he, uh, uh, he, um, he encouraged me to learn the language. So we went to Paris for a year, but that was 13 years ago. So I think the jig is up. We're we're kind of staying now. Um, So geographically, I got to the south of France via um, my lovely husband. Um, More conceptually, (laughs) I started my own business about 10 years ago because I started a family and I wanted to be present and flexible and free to do all of the things. But if anybody out there knows starting a business at the same time as you start your family it might be you know the timing is not ideal so I had a lot of fun in the first few years fun being inverted commas there but I work with um solopreneurs I work with a lot of people who start their own business on the back of really being passionate about the service that they can provide but then they get into looking for clients and they realize that they're getting taken away from the actual work that they set out to do in the first place. So I help solopreneurs who offer services um, to show up online and connect with their ideal clients without the stressy horribleness of Mm. doing the wrong thing that doesn't suit your personality. So that's basically what I help people to do. Started off in graphic design. I'm not even going to say how many years ago that is because you're like a a fair bit younger than me. <laughs> Let's just say 20 years ago, I was a graphic designer and then over the years evolved into web and then digital strategy is kind of my main gig now. Very cool. That's how I started too in just doing graphic design, logo design, all that good stuff and transferred into website design and now doing what I do with the branding strategy. So it's very, very similar. Uh, is this something you always thought you'd be doing? This kind of running your own business? When I think about it, I couldn't not have my own business. I mean, you know, you get a taste of that freedom and yeah, um, I, I've been offered jobs over the years. Um, well, anytime I've worked in like for a corporate, many times they've offered me like a, a job with them. Not many times. It's maybe happened about five times over 10 years. But still, that's many for, for like people who don't necessarily want to go back to that world. That feels like a lot. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think I could make one of those reels uh, for like getting offered a job when you've worked solo for 10 years. It's like the old, ew, David, you know that one yeah. that goes around? The shit's great one? Yeah. It's like, it's just the thought of having a, a job job. It's just like, holy. Having no. to request time off, having to like oh. not be able to go to the grocery store in the middle of the day. No, I I'm mean, good. What? This actually, it came into full focus when I was pregnant because I was working... I was kind of, I kind of draw a line between, I used to freelance, which is like me going in there and like covering a project. Um, Mm -hmm. And there was a moment there when I was, I was pregnant. You know, you have, you have appointments when you're pregnant, you're a busy person when you're pregnant and having to say three days in advance, I need to go and, and have this appointment because I'm having a baby and the, just the eye roll across the, the eye roll across the office. You know, that's like, sorry. Excuse me, I'm producing life over here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, so I could, I could, there's no going back, but I think about it now. Um, uh, I had a great work experience. I had really great bosses when I worked in agencies and like bigger offices. I had really, really good experience. So I'm not coming off the back of, I had terrible bosses and a terrible experience, but you know, that little taste of freedom. It's very hard mm-hmm. to get back to the nine yeah. to five office job. Definitely. I've only gotten uh, one, not five of those offers. And it's like, uh, it sometimes it seems, yeah, sometimes it seems like really good. Like, all right, you know, whatever. I'll just, you know, settle down, have the consistency. It's all good. No. Ew, David. No, Mm. I can't do it. Um, so you talk a lot about kind of picking, and you said this before when you were kind of introducing yourself, picking a, a lane, I guess, so to speak, for you and picking digital strategies that kind of work for you. But I feel like before we get there, we kind of have to define what our online presence will be and what our online presence would look like. So how do you define online presence? What do you mean by that? Well, online presence is any possible touch point that somebody mm-hmm. could have with you. Touchpoint, obviously being a bit of a techie marketing word, but anywhere you show up and it represents your your offering or your business. So an online presence can be anything from a web page, a website, uh, uh, a social media profile, an interview, a guest post, anywhere you are associated with, like where you are showing up online. Um, your online presence will kind of just get defined one way or another. Um, but being intentional about it is where the kind of the value comes from. So if you're going about it and every time you're showing up, you're being associated with something connected to your brand. So mm-hmm. like my brand is uh, Claire Creative, like my name is in there, Creative is in there. I talk to parents quite a lot because a lot of mums go, like mothers, they go start their own business for exactly that reason that we talked about, the inflexible workplace. Um, so I talk, I show up talking about anything that relates back to that. So mm. any touch point that shows up, it's your online presence and how intentional you are about that. That's like your brand strategy and your digital strategy, then even, even broader to that, to just anywhere that you can possibly get a link that would lead to leads or lead to clients. It's kind yeah. of just that, that massive ecosystem and it, there's, many a niche can be had even in that uh even in in, in doing that kind of service as well yeah and then wherever you may see that touch point whether that's those social media and email we want to always make sure that is feels like our brand and feels like our presence it almost has that recognizable element to it for sure absolutely Um, so there's between TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media things, all the different email platforms that we can do, all the different email hosting, or sorry, website hosting platforms we can choose from. It could be extremely overwhelming to choose strategies, to choose platforms, to choose all the things. So what, how do you help your clients or what advice do you have for anybody who is either just starting out or someone who is kind of trying to adjust or pick the and refine the platforms that work best for them? Well, this is, you, you've put your finger right on it. There's just a massive amount of options that you have. Um, and like when I, the simplest version of how I, description of how I work is I'm helping people to navigate the gazillion 
decisions that they have to literally make. gazillion <laughs> like so many decisions micro decisions what word do i put here what color does it does that associate with is it an action colors so there's so many decisions and a lot of people who come to work with me they've done a lot of the kind of the, the foundational work themselves like they registered a domain set up an email address started to throw up some pages and then they're just kind of like i, I can't i can't do this anymore alone um so the 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 advice that i would would give is to just be a little bit kind to yourself because mm. this is like a massive like setting up a digital presence setting up a brand online set up a business there's so many decisions there and it's very hard to do it alone i mean i don't work alone i have coaches and mentors and yeah masterminds and everything to just kind of to be aware that this is an enormous decision making process and that can be overwhelming and to just be kind to yourself if you're feeling a little bit like overwhelmed or that kind of decision fatigue to to know that that's normal and to give yourself a little bit of time and space to step back to zoom out and go okay where does this decision sit in the big mm. picture of things and then to zoom right back in again and say this button i just don't want to say click here i want to see something a little bit more exciting and even those micro pieces of text connect back with your brand but just that self compassion and self kindness i think people yeah. forget like i need to hustle i need to get this done i need to just be able to do this um and i think a little bit of kindness is always it's always a good idea yeah i love that you know we were chatting before we hit record about the element that mindset has in all of this so can you speak a little bit to kind of maybe how you discovered that that definitely is a thing that needs to happen in our businesses yeah. um and then any kind of tips that you may have for incorporating that yeah so I, I often point to the fact that setting up online setting up lead generation online setting up any kind of online presence you have a lot of the mechanisms and a lot of information around the mechanisms of doing this like squarespace wordpress mailchimp blah 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 blah, blah. and these are all <laughs> the mechanisms and there's even the social media platforms like instagram TikTok, pinterest these are all tools and ways of showing up but the whole other part behind that is the mindset and it's about that confidence of how you are showing up on brand i know on brand mm. is like a little brand yes <laughs> um but it's like the mindset behind that there's a lot of it takes a lot of guts to show up online especially if you are the face of your own brand yeah if you are i mean literally my name is in my brand claire creative it's like it's it's, it's about me <laughs> it's not yeah. it's about me but it's about them but um i've lost my thread now yeah the, the mechanisms there and all the two of those tools and as soon as you start to google stuff you're getting targeted by a lot of marketing messages as well that have the next big thing or you're a fool to not be doing this and yeah then we can doubt the thing that we were actually in the middle of putting in place and we reject the thing that we were creating and we start a new one so we have a lot of things that are partially done but not one direct path that goes all the way through there's um there's a, a really great graph um if you can imagine a graph between time and emotional state, the, ver the vertical line being time and the horizontal line being emotional state, and you draw a U shape there. So at the very start of a business or project, you've got enthusiasm and, oh my God, I'm gonna do this. This is gonna be amazing. That's uninformed optimism because you don't really know mm. what's ahead of you, but you're super excited. And you step into that project and it drops way down <laughs> into informed pessimism. You kind of get the picture of, well, what this is, what this thing really is and how many gazillion decisions are there. And then you get to the very bottom and you're just, you're in a, sp a state of despair because you feel like you're constantly doing things and trying things and building yeah. things and you haven't yet seen any results. So that's, they call that the pit of despair. Yeah, no, like I can process. definitely relate to that graph <laughs> on numerous, numerous times. <laughs> it, it does come back up again, though, because 
if if you can if you are if you do work with somebody like you or me and they kind of have a strategy behind it you'll ultimately start to see those results and part of your mindset is to notice every single little result that is in the right direction and then just yeah. use that to kind of power yourself forward because it, t- it takes time to build momentum especially for a brand new thing or a completely pivoted um, business offering if you've been doing one thing and then you just niche down even further or change direction it takes time for people to get it and to really understand what you're doing now. So the yeah. mindset there, you if you are the person running the show, you need to have that energy to keep going, to, going. to have that patience and persistence to go yeah. through. I think we often too kind of like forget how far we've come in such a short amount of time. As you were saying, when people are first starting, we kind of are so excited and then we start to fall down when we realize how many gazillion decisions that we have to make. Mm-hmm. But you have to also realize like the thing you'll build endurance, right? Like you build endurance over time as a baby entrepreneur to a teenage entrepreneur to a grown up entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of build this endurance and your decision making gets a little faster, or you have more confidence in yourself to make the decisions, or you have more confidence in yourself to adjust. But I think once we hit that like preteen age, we forget how far we've come in such a short amount of time, how much growth we've had in such a short amount of time, and how much your mindset has flexed, has improved, has grown stronger, has grown muscle on top of it. Um, And it's easy to kind of fall back into that, well, uh, it just won't work, I'll just try something else. Mm. But I think the difference is you say, I try something else or I'll try it again or I'll do it again rather than, well, what the heck am I doing? Why isn't anything working? Should I just give up? Um, that endurance, I think, is is super key. And just like you were saying, just keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I, had a, I had a business coach a couple of years ago and she says, having your own business, it's like personal growth on steroids. It's like, it's like... You didn't know you were even going to do it. Like you had no idea that that's what you were getting into. And it's, yes, it is the biggest, unexpected, beautiful, and gross personal <laughs> development journey you'll ever go on. All worth it, though. <laughs> they do say blood, sweat, and tears, you know? I mean, it's... Absolutely. Absolutely. So if we are trying different things, right? So if we're trying a different platform or trying a different method or trying a different strategy, how do we recognize when it's we're just kind of maybe still figuring it out and it's not necessarily um, going the way we thought it would, would, but we should still kind of stick to it? Or are there certain signs we should look for when we know a strategy is not for us? Yeah, that's a really excellent question. And it's kind of, it's, it's that very, it's that crucial first step in taking on any kind of visibility or any kind of stuff online that is to establish your 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 presence um the it's to be really that very very first step is to be really intentional about what you're actually doing to be sure of what your what the point is of doing this Mm -hmm. not like somebody said you should be on tiktok so i'm going to go and be on tiktok now um so it has to come from you know i trust my gut a lot with these things and that initial stage of really setting your intention. Well, why am I setting up on this new platform? And why should I question that? So say, just use TikTok as an example. I don't use TikTok for my business because I already have an established following on a couple of different platforms. And I'm like, I have two kids as well. So I'm not doing that. Um, The intention of making that decision is I protect my time like nothing else i protect my time and my energy like nothing else so if i was to set out to increase visibility i would do something that aligns with my temperament and my energy Mm. and it has to also align with where my ideal clients are spending time yeah my ideal clients maybe do spend time on a platform i'll go for it and really be aware of how my energy levels are feeling and just to kind of know in myself that this feels right or not to push through a little bit of discomfort is, is always necessary. But if you go about it with intention and you have a strategy that is measurable behind you. So I'm going to post once a day for 10 days and see if I 
if I get the hang of this, if I feel like this is just the wrong place for me, if I start to get any kind of little traction there um, and the right kind of people are getting, uh, are, are seeing my content, then it's definitely the right way to go. If, yeah. if it feels good and it's starting to work, just to be to notice that I often encourage people to do stream of consciousness journaling so it's like Hmm. just get it all out of your head because sometimes our our own you know our own nonsense not sure yeah but sometimes our own own stuff gets in the way Uh, like imposter syndrome or just not necessarily understanding the new platform so it all starts at that very very first step of understanding if I'm going to try this because and I'm going to measure it with these metrics and then you go for it. Push yeah, it I'm a big fan of, of, yes, I love that. I love that you said that, push that discomfort a little bit. Um, I'm a big fan of not trying things because everybody else is doing it, but trying yeah. it because you feel some kind of intuitive pull in your gut or in, you know, something that's telling you to let's, you know, let's experiment here. So I love that. Love that you brought up trusting your gut on that. Um, What do you feel like might be some mistakes that people make when trying to set up their digital footprint or their digital strategy? Not trusting their gut. Yeah. (laughs) Big one. (laughs) Not not setting something that is measurable. Okay. A huge mistake that I, if anybody follows me and listens to my content, they must be sick of hearing me say, always make decisions based on who your ideal client is. That's mm-hmm. the biggest, biggest, biggest mistake. And there are many mistakes within the definition of an ideal client as well. So ideal client is in its simplest terms, somebody who needs what you have, somebody who you are kind of hoping to work with, like as in they're not going to make your life hell and somebody who's going to pay you. They're willing and able to pay you what you need to be paid in order to do this because you can have an ideal client who absolutely needs you, but they're not somebody who is willing or able to pay you. So just get that out of the way. Make sure that you're not going off assumptions so you can trust your gut, but sometimes we can also make assumptions. The other big mistake around ideal client definition is Oh, I mean, I'm my own ideal client, which to some extent can be a little bit true, but you're further along in the problem solving journey. So it's your ideal client isn't exactly somebody like you, but maybe you five years ago. Yeah. And then another mistake in the ideal client definition is to not actually speak to human beings. I mean, I always recommend speaking to five, once you've defined who that ideal client is, the problem that you help them to solve, the fact that they're willing and able to pay you, I encourage people to go and talk to at least five people, not friends and family, not past clients, but complete strangers who fit this description of they need Mm. your help and they're willing and able to pay and they're somebody that you're, you know, happy to help. And to go and speak to them to understand how they speak about this problem and the desired yeah. solution, to get their words. Because if you're offering the service, you have a certain level of expertise and you, you might use certain vocabulary. So for right. example, I use the word strategy and I use the word lead. Some people have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about when I talk about right. and strategy. Um, but again, they are, wouldn't necessarily be my ideal client because they're less far along in their journey. They don't even have that kind of vocabulary yet. That's fine. And we all have to start. But so the biggest, biggest mistake with digital strategy is to just make assumptions about your ideal client, that it's somebody exactly like you, that it's somebody who needs your help, but forgetting that crucial part of you're going to have a very expensive hobby on your hands if they're not able to pay you. Yep, absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with saying no to a client. Um, I've definitely made that mistake at least twice of saying yes to a project that I shouldn't have and just getting myself into a situation where it was not my ideal client. And I wasn't excited about it. The work wasn't as great. Mm -hmm. They weren't as happy. And it was just that tough learning experience that you kind of have to go through at some point. 
It's the mistake um, that keeps on giving also. <laughs> yeah, you're so right. <laughs> so how, if somebody is like, oh, I just don't really want to show up online, I'm nervous to show up online, someone defines themselves as an introvert, how would you, what tips and tricks would you give them to get out there a little bit more? This, that's a, a really, I love this question, because showing up online doesn't mean dancing on TikTok. It doesn't mean having a thousand videos in your YouTube channel. Showing up could be a much more quiet thing. It can be a much more discreet thing. And there's a way for everybody to do it. So showing up can be, it can look very, very different from one person to the next. So there's kind of two parts to this. Showing up can be all singing, all dancing, all shouting and laughing or whatever, if that's your vibe, if that's your brand. It can be a quieter approach where you're part of closed communities like mm. masterminds and networking groups. It's still online and you're still able to access people from all over the world from your home. But it's a more intimate setting that's suitable for introverts. It's not going to drain their energy and, you know, they'll have to step away at some point. Um, so there's, way, there's ways for everybody to show up online and it doesn't need to be that shouty thing. The other side of it... I work with a lot of creatives like designers and copy and photographers and people who are from a creative background and for them showing up online almost always has to involve some part of showing their work or to show mm -hmm. their their portfolio or even to just show testimonials and reviews from people first part of that is obviously having to ask for them which is another problem but yeah <laughs> um, um i just even spoke to somebody today who has won awards, has got great feedback from all of their clients, but I was looking at the website and there was no trace of any of it. And mm. they said, oh, I don't really like to be a show off. I don't really like to blow my own trumpet or to seem like I'm full yeah. like a big ego, ego maniac. But um, there's a little switch that is, it, it's useful here. And it's something that uh, I use also when I'm like, oh, I don't want to put that testimonial up. I feel so cringy. Um, but you have to make it about the work. It has to, it's not about you showing off. It's about how you have helped other people. And in doing mm -hmm. that, you get to help more people and you get to do the work that you set out to do in the first place rather than just doing nothing. So yeah. making it a, switching it around from it's not actually not about you. It's about the people out there who need your help. And that sometimes can just be that little, you know, that little kink in the hose that once you let go of that it's so much easier to show your work to show your testimonials to to show up online in whatever way aligns with your temperament yeah absolutely i um am big into storytelling marketing and something mm -hmm. that kind of came up when you were talking about putting them first is we are we always kind of want to position ourselves as the hero of our own stories, but we are not. Your client is the hero, but you are the guide, which is kind of the best position to be in. You get to help them realize they're in one position, but they actually can be over here. And you help them and guide them through that and hold their hand through that. And that's that piece. That's that story, that progression that you get to show off. So I love that. Love that you said Absolutely. that. It's, you, you are the Gandalf. But it's, this yeah. is also, even though you know this, um, a, a good friend of mine says we learn things in spirals. You learn it and then you pass by it again and go, oh, right, okay. And then you pass right. by it again. And you go, totally. Oh, right, okay. That, there's that thing again. So like yeah. you learn in like this kind of, you keep making, you keep coming up against this obstacle and it's like, oh yeah, no, I'm Gandalf. Sorry, sorry. I love that. That's so <laughs> funny. Again. Um, so as we wrap up here, there's one question I always ask my guests, and that is, can you define a time where you were living off brand, either in your business, your life, whatever you feel like sharing, meaning that you just weren't living in alignment with what you were doing, you weren't making decisions from that place of intuition, and you just felt off, and how did you recognize that, and how did you navigate back to living on brand? This, like, this is my kind of, I was thinking about it also when we spoke about er, earlier about um, not ideal clients. When I started my business with the tiny baby at home, 
Um, I was taking every project that came my way because I mm. thought if I don't match my pre- previous salary, I'll have to get a job job and I'll have to put this little guy, somebody else is going to have to look after him and I won't get to see him as much. And uh, it was this kind of internal panic. So every time, I mean, I would look at my pipeline and there was nothing for like next month, I would like panic and offer discounts and really undervalue the service that I was yeah. that I was bringing and I remember vividly it was about three o'clock in the morning and I was working on somebody's website and I realized I had to ask them a question they hadn't answered one of the key questions for like finishing up this thing and it was about to launch and it was the middle of the night I could hear little baby sleeping noises in the next room and I was just sitting at my kitchen table and I was like what am I doing here what what am I crazy if I like if I was my own, if this was a boss making me do this, like I would be running for the hills ages ago, but I was being a horrible boss to myself. Yeah. And this was kind of a moment, like a, one of those light bulb moments that really took maybe another two years to properly, you know, learning in a spiral. I kept passing by it. I need to stop taking just any kind of work Yeah. and to really, to specifically niche to people who are going to appreciate it we're going to align on values we're going to align on what is a realistic deadline so that Claire doesn't have to work till three o'clock in the morning yeah and this kind of it became a pivotal and a key part of my brand as in you got to be kind to yourself in your own business and I was being awful to myself I was like never taking a break I was um like working evenings and weekends and I didn't see my friends for months on end when I was with my little baby boy who was so cute. I was checking my phone for emails. I was getting this yeah. panic feeling, urgent changes required on this website. And it was just, I was living so far out of what I now call my, my key values in my brand. Yeah. That it's just, it was like a really painful lesson because I was physically in pain because I was at a tiny little laptop breaking my back. Yeah. And it was just this kind of, this light bulb moment of like, what am I doing here? Um, and it was, a, it was, I think it's a lesson that a lot of people learn that they need to say no to some people and they need to yeah. really get clear on what is my most valuable contribution to somebody and how can I just do that every single day? So, Absolutely. Yeah, that was a yeah. Better. That was a bit of a I, whirlwind story. I, I think, <laughs> I think a lot, no, it's great. I think a lot of people do have to learn that that kind of decision or that kind of um, navigation in their own business in their own way and I just I always ask that question because I I just hope that you know we could save a couple of people from going through (laughs) through the depths of it as much as maybe we did but so I appreciate you sharing that thus thank you so much Um, and as we wrap up here please tell us where we can find more of you and if you're kind of working on any cool projects right now that you want us to know about it was so fun chatting with you you know thanks so much for having me on that was so much fun um, you can find me online at clairecreative.com on Instagram at clairecreative underscore com and pretty much nowhere else because I <laughs> my time good and energy. I love it <laughs> Um, I'm working on too many projects to get into right now, but if you pop on over to clairecreative.com, I have loads of resources there for digital strategy, for the mechanisms and mindset of getting leads and clients online without overstretching and overwhelming yourself. So pop over to clairecreative.com and have a little search around. And if anybody wants to jump on a call with me, I offer a little digital strategy triage call you know, like in ER, they do like a little quick mm-hmm. triage of what's going on. And it's just this kind of quick zoom in, zoom out of what your business is and where are the gaps? Where are you missing opportunities? So you can you can find that on clearcreative.com as well. Perfect. And I'll link that right in the show notes for everyone. Well, thank you again for coming on and chatting with us. It's super, super informative, super fun. And we will keep tabs on you. Yay. Thanks so much.